Hello, and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire, and today I have a little bit of a different format for this video because I've had many of you who have asked me questions, and normally you post those for me to see under my videos. And I make note, I normally and I always respond to each message, but sometimes you probably notice I will tell you, hey, but I'm gonna look into this more from uh, see what the 25th has to add or what they have to say about this. And that's what I've done. we have written down all your questions and I have um, asked the 25th in my last session. In this case, it was also with my friend Lorraine. And so uh, today I will be answering some of these questions. I will actually do three different videos about this and put them out as soon as possible. And you will notice that some of the questions I have already answered uh, to some degree, but sometimes I am interested in some follow-up questions for the 20th class, so that's why I might mention the person. Either way, we're going we're gonna to find out a lot more information today. I mean, I was quite uh, blown away by some of the stuff that they have told me. So thank you so much for your questions. It really is fun to get these answers and to be able to ask the 25th for the lowdown, a lot of the stuff. All right, so before we move forward, uh, I would like to ask you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And also do like this video and do leave me a comment below because as I said, not only I love the questions, but I also love it when you just tell me how if things resonate with you, how things are going and uh, or just say hi. And that's totally fine. I love it. Uh, as I always say, we are a tribe. We are finding each other. Uh, you know, we don't know what is real and what is not real. We're getting this information, which is wonderful. It means we've been seeking for something. And so that's why we align with certain things. So, so for example, the resonation of the, the information I put out with uh, from the 25th obviously resonates with me or I wouldn't be sharing it. And uh, but so it's never been my goal, obviously, to push this down anybody's throat. I mean, it has to resonate with you, obviously. Uh, otherwise, you know, you might not even uh, you might not even find this channel. So in that sense, I do feel like we very much have a tribe and we finally are finding each other. And that's why I love it when you just even stop by and say hi. All right. So let's uh, start reading because I'm very eager to share this information with you. All right. So we'll start here with a question from Amanda, uh, and she asks, do the 12,000 all know who they are? Are they aware by now by now of who they are, like Clea is? And what Lorraine, is, uh, Lorraine added that like Clea is in the sense of are they consciously aware is what she's asking and what Amanda was asking. Me, so the answer is from 25th, as you know, uh, the 12,000 might not consciously know who they are but they all know who they are and they're all questioning yes and the moment that you question you can find out very quickly so Amanda and I do think I've said this to other people before in the comments uh, who might have had different questions about whether their loved ones were going here or were going there or where they were going where their children were going to go with them if you ask the fact that you're asking just listen intentionally ask and intentionally uh, decide that you're going to get an answer. And if you have to make it more clear for yourself, you want to be open to this answer, maybe even make some rules. I want it within three days, or I want it to look like this. Maybe I'm driving and I see a billboard that gives you the answer. Whatever that might be for you where you're not going to miss it. Because you see, the higher self always, always answers. We are the ones that sometimes don't recognize the answer. So the bottom line here is if you want to know something, ask and you will receive the answer and that's what they were confirming that that basically the 12,000 they're all uh they're getting an inkling that this is happening and uh that they are and they're questioning and if you're questioning that it means you're already open to getting the answer and you will get it Lorraine all right a question from Kath Ergin, I, I don't know, Ergin, I don't know how you pronounce the last name, I'm sorry, if I'm not pronouncing it right, but Kath, is the anhedonia, anhedonia, <laughs> and disinterestedness in life that results from knowing this information purposeful, and how can we deal with it? I go for walks, socialize, watch movies, and read books to pass the time, but this existence feels deeply lacking. It is ultimately boring, 
because I know that in the higher dimensions, we can do anything we want with no limitations. I wouldn't necessarily call it depression, but perpetually feel like I am in the classroom waiting for the bell to ring. Is it okay to just play the waiting game? I thought that was a good analogy when she said waiting for the bell to ring, I get it. Me, chuckling. So the 25th was actually chuckling at this, uh, in, in, good, in good humor at this question. And, and you'll understand why in a second. So many, many people on earth, whether they are consciously aware of what's happening or not, they know what's happening. And therefore it is for pretty much everybody a waiting game. When is it my turn? When is this gonna be over? And we know, we know what's happening. We know when it's gonna be over. So for some, the way that that shows up in 3D life is a certain state of boredom, a certain state of dis disinterestedness, <laughs> the way she refers to it, anhedonia. Absolutely, this will show up. We are not, as much as we believe that our multidimensional self is separate from our 3D version of ourselves, almost as if this 3D version is a plastic version that's close to everything like a robot, that's not really the case, is it? We are aware of everything, even right now, even when we pretend to be brushing our teeth or thinking of something else, we know everything, we feel everything. So is it unexpected? Is it surprising that there would be people who find us disinterested in 3D knowing that this is all gonna come down? Absolutely not. Is it okay to play the waiting game? That's what we're doing. Laughing, they were laughing here. While there is no time in 3D, we are experiencing it as, okay, when it's gonna happen? When is it gonna happen? When we are consciously aware of it, of this deadline. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the question we are well, asking ourselves, okay, when is it gonna happen? And whether we are consciously aware of it, of this deadline or not. So is it okay to play that? Of course it's okay. The essence, we can only lie to ourselves so much. We can only hide from what we call our 3D conscious awareness so much. The fact is we play a game here and we pretend to be blind and deaf and mute, but we aren't. We are infinite beings. So of course all this stuff is gonna trickle through, of course. Even the people, even the people that you might never guess, that you would think, oh, all they think about, they think everything is solid, they're atheists, all they worry about is money, 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 and doing their job and going to the games, they also know. It's not as it, as it appears. Everyone knows what's going on and everyone is feeling it. And you cannot, because the veil is thinning, because the matrix is thinning, Everybody's feeling it. There is not one person on the planet right now who feels the same way they did a year ago, two years ago. So it might show up in different ways. People questioning their job, people questioning their relationship, people questioning whatever, questioning the media. Doesn't matter how it shows up. You don't even have to be awake or what we consider awake. You just have to be an essence. If you're an essence, you know what's happening and therefore it will show up for you one way or the other. So good for her that she's enjoying herself, going for walks, meeting people that give her pleasure. Good for her. We would recommend this for everybody because guess what? You know what's happening. Whether you're hearing these words or not, you don't have to know consciously. You don't have to have anybody call you on the phone and tell you, hey, this is what's happening. You already know. So even if you're just dealing with a job that doesn't give you pleasure anymore, ask yourself, why is this happening? This is why it's happening. Because we all know this is the end. So what is the point of doing things that give you no pleasure? There is really no point. So yes, it's perfectly fine to play the waiting game, but enjoy while you wait. This is all we would recommend. Enjoy yourself while you wait. So this answer made me very happy. So I hope, Kath, that uh, this makes you happy too. And it looks like you're doing exactly the right thing. So 
All right, we're now moving, so this is from Lorraine. All right, we're now moving on to questions about NPCs. And this is non-player characters for those of you who might not be familiar with this uh, acronym. And this is a question from Akari Nagumi. Nagumi. Hello, Akari. <laughs> How does in essence choose a body to come into? Do they consider country of birth, family, lineage, IQ level, skin color, that kind of thing, since it will affect the experience of the essence? How does one essence choose? And I know, Akari, your question was similar to this. I just expanded it. It wasn't exactly written like this. I expanded it because you asked about something related to this. And I really wanted to understand how we choose our bodies, basically. So, so this is still very much in relation to your question. Me. Yes, we choose everything about our experience. And when something doesn't quite suit us, we might change it as soon as we come into the body. We might cause certain things to happen. So yes, we choose everything about an experience. So we choose, do we want to incarnate in a man or a woman? Do we want to incarnate in an animal? We know our teammates choose to come into animals. So we choose where we incarnate. Everything that sets, sets us up to have the experience we decide that we want to have. And that would include anything that has to do with the body as well. Because we all well know, very well know, that certain types of bodies will give you the ability to do certain things that other types of bodies will not. For example, if I wanted to become a basketball player and I wanted to experience that, I wouldn't be choosing a body that maybe is four feet tall. And so we do choose everything based on these experiences that we want to have. We consider everything when we choose the body we come into. <laughs> Excuse me, Lorraine, thank you. So on that note, in regards to mental illness, like a bipolar di uh, disorder, schizophrenia, these, these are experiences that the essence wants to experience and what causes these illnesses. And these were two, I joined together two questions from EDC. EDC asked about bipolar disorder and, and mental illnesses in general. And Heath actually asked about schizophrenia because he said that he has, he knows people who are affected by it. And this also relates to Kath's question about, uh, I'm sorry, to Akari's question about NPCs. How do we choose the bodies that we come into? Are there bodies that are more prone to this or, or not? So the answer, me. No, that is interesting because this is unfortunately due to the fact that we've lost our polarity a long time ago. We've never been able to regain it. While the essence, of course, always chooses, the essence is always free. The essence has the ability to heal any condition truly. The essence could regrow a limb if it chose to do that because you understand these avatars are not real. They're real in the way that we think of them, but as you know, nothing is really real, not even this planet. So why do we have these conditions here? It's really a matter of energy. There is this dense energy on this planet. And unfortunately, a lot of bodies and essences are subject to it. And a lot of bodies are not necessarily able to recalibrate themselves when they are in contact with this type of energy or something goes quote unquote wrong at some point in their lives and the body is not able to calibrate or is slow to recalibrate on its own. Because again, the body is capable of doing many things, but it does require more time than an essence would. But the essence might be interested in not resolving the situation, might be interested at that point being presented with a type of experience that it might or might not have forecasted or predicted, might realize that actually that experience allows it to have the experience or go to words and experience that the essence is interested in feeling, in living through. Or the essence might even decide, I'm done. This is not working. This NPC is not working for me anymore. This body is not working. And they might leave. And they might leave for a little while, or they might leave forever. So this also happens. It happens a lot. We've discussed this before when we spoke about dementia. Dementia is the body looping the body left behind by the essence looping. The body cannot handle the energy, cannot handle the absence of the energy. I'm sorry, cannot handle the absence of the essence. And that's what's happening. And the same thing, 
we've been asked about bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. That's exactly what's happening. The energy, the body is not able to calibrate on its own. And the essence might either be going or gone, which doesn't mean the essence will never come back, but it might be gone for long periods of time, or the essence might actually be interested at that point in experiencing this thing, because maybe it's teaching them something else, or perhaps they don't have to deal with a lot of things. You have to understand a lot of the conditions that we consider troublesome, very troubling, I should say, very troubling, because of course they affect the family and we assume the person is suffering or we might even see them suffering when they do have moments of lucidity. Really, they are not necessarily negative in the way we think of it from a 3D perspective. This might actually be achieving not only a purpose for the essence, but the essence might actually have the ability through this experience to be left alone. Maybe the essence is tired of being told what to do or of living in an unhappy relationship or in an unhappy condition. And all of a sudden, they're okay with this happening because it is actually easier for them. It is easier for the essence to focus on certain realities or other experiences they want to have. So once again, we remind you that not everything is as it seems from the outside, from a 3D perspective. So now there was, uh, I wanted to ask this question and I will read it to you in a second, but also relates to another question that Lydia Chambers, hi Lydia, <laughs> um, wanted to know. So my question is, uh, amazing, so this was Lorraine saying, amazing, is this planet's geography the way it's been explained to us or is there more to it? Is there a land beyond Antarctica, for example? This was my question, but as they answered this question, they also answered the question that Lydia had, which I'm going to read. There are some people who say that we are on a spaceship and this is not a real planet. Is there any truth to this? So this response from the 25th basically answers both these questions. Me. So, while there are things within certain continents that they're hiding from us, like for example, in, our, in Antarctica, there is stuff going on there that they are not telling us, not just underground. There is no land that we're not of. I mean, there is, you know, there might be a little bit here and a little bit there. The map might not exactly be the way that we're told, but all in all, it's pretty much, it's pretty much the way that we think it is. So with the planet and the continents and the countries and whatnot, <coughs> excuse me, and you probably already know that the maps are not the way that actual earth looks. Okay, that's what we're talking about. It's like, even if you fix the maps the way they're supposed to be fixed, it's not like there are hidden continents, for example, okay? So yeah, the maps are very misleading in terms of what they are. I mean, the planet doesn't look the continents don't look exactly the way that a map makes it look. But again, in terms of land mass, it's what it is. There is nothing major that's really hidden, like, as I said, like a continent. Now, some areas, you know, are not described the way that they, that they are actually are like, again, mostly in Antarctica. But it's not quite as some people are saying that they make it look like Earth is like, say, the small circle, and uh, you know, there is a bigger, there is a much bigger planet around it. And we're not told about all the geog geography around it. And I just want to say here before I continue, I'm referring to, I have seen uh, when I watched some uh, videos on, uh, on uh, the flat earth theory, which, which were totally interesting. They were talking about resets, et cetera. And I've mentioned them in previous videos. They also had a map, like it was a speculation where they had the planet, basically the way we know it, our globe in the middle. But then they showed that there were a bunch of, uh, it was a much bigger planet and there were a bunch of other continents around it. And so some people were speculating maybe the aliens are living here. And in fact, there's even a psychic, and I think they refer to it uh, next, where they say, oh, this is, we're all on a plane and all the aliens are here and everything is happening out of the same space. So I wanted to uh, explain this so this, this answer makes more sense. So again, uh, some say that there is a bigger planet around it and that we're not really told about all the geography around our planet. The reason some people say this, some of it comes from the flat earth theory, from the fact that there were different maps found over time Again, we leave clues for ourselves because we're supposed to question, okay? 
we find these clues when we're ready to connect closer to the truth. But what some people are saying is that, for example, there is a person, and again, it's psychic and, and the name doesn't matter. It's just, she's somebody on YouTube. And she's saying that all of it, what we call the multiverse is all happening in one plane of existence, which is all on this earth. So the aliens are, the aliens are here with us. They're just on the outer rings of this planet. That is not correct. So we get a little bit carried away with conspiracy theories because they're very fun. And they are <laughs> on this planet because, you know, and depending on the perspective that you look at things from, you can say this is all holographic. So technically the entire multiverse is here in this little spot because it's all holographic. You can look at it however you want. But if we are looking at it from a 3D perspective, the planet is the planet. And more or less, the landmass looks the way that, you know, we're told it looks even though proportionally it doesn't quite look the way our maps make it look. The maps are very skewed in terms of proportions. You probably already know about this. This is a known fact to anybody who studies maps. For example, that Africa is a much bigger continent than what it's made to look like on regular maps. That's just one example. So Lydia, basically to answer your question, uh, no, we're not, we're not on a ship, this is a planet. If we're looking at it from a 3D perspective, this is very much a planet, it's round and it's the way we think it looks. All right, so I'm gonna stop here. I don't want this video to get too long, but again, I will do two more videos just answering your questions. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.